with us Dr. Don Hirschman from Columbia University, who is uh, co-chairing this session uh, with me, but I hopefully we can loop her in for the panel discussion uh, and get overcome some of these technical issues. I'm Neil Iyengar, a medical oncologist at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, uh, and it's my great pleasure uh, to introduce this now. panel. We're going to start I'm with sure uh, Dr. Work. Ting I'm Bao. On my other computer. We're going to start with yeah, Dr. Ting Bao from that. Memorial Sloan Kettering yeah, so Cancer no Center, who will be speaking to us. Unless they bring us all in at the end. Maybe they just. Is there a way we can cut the, the audio so from the, the feed? So we can, there we go. We're gonna start with Dr. Ting Bao from Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. She'll be speaking about acupuncture. Dr. Bao. Thank you so much. Um, so it's really my pleasure to be here and I really want to thank the planning committee to um, in, uh, invite me to be here. So today I'll talk about acupuncture for breast cancer patients. And I'm the director of integrated breast oncology at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. I'm also the immediate past president of Society for Integrative Oncology. So I'm a medical oncologist focused on seeing breast cancer patients and the acupuncturist and also integrated medicine physician. So I have nothing to disclose. And first, uh, what is acupuncture? It's a traditional Chinese medicine technique of inserting and manipulating hairs and needles into specific point in the body to reach therapeutic effect. Those points are called acupoints. So what are those acupoints? So those are usually the points on the body, on the skin, with high um, density of neurovascular structures with usually low electrical resistance and generally is between or at the edge of muscle groups. So a typical acupuncture session involves a comfortable bed and then the acupuncturist insert the acupuncture needles and stimulate it to the point the patient has this de qi sensation. That's usually the sensation of feeling heaviness, numbness, or tightness. And then they leave the needle in place for 20 to 30 minutes, and then come in and take out the needles. And chronic condition usually requires several sessions. One study shows you need about six sessions to know whether it works or not. And then for acute condition, for example, you sleep badly um, in bed and have neck pain, one session can take care of it. So how does it work? So there has been years of research on, in this area. And um, so those are the list of potential uh, mechanism, how it works. So number one is uh, potentially work through neurohormonal pathways. The idea is you insert the needle and then stimulate the needle, and then that sends signal to the brain and activate the hypothalamus pituitary gland and then cause change in neurohormonal peptide such as beta endorphin, ecaphalin, or those are all endogenous opiate neuropeptides. So that explains why patients um, has less pain after acupuncture and sometimes feel really happy um, during and after acupuncture. And other studies shows it may work by manipulate neurotransmitters such as brain-derived neurotrophic factors. And other theory shows it may work through neural gate theory by causing those non-painful stimulation, that's heaviness, soreness sensation, and therefore block the pain perception. And um, also it may work through stimulate the endogenous pain inhibitory pathway, therefore produce analgesic effect. And also study has shown it helps decrease inflammation through immunomodulation, basically by decrease cytokines and increase anti-inflammatory cytokines. And then um, some other study also shows those functional MRI studies shows by stimulating different points, you're stimulating different brain areas cause different um, activities. So those numbers, LR3 is the liver three um, point, it's actually in your uh, feet and uh, between the big toe and the second toe. As you can see, when you stimulate that point, different area of the brain region lights up. When you compare that with LI4, which is the large intestine point on your hand, and different area lights up. So there's some point specificity there. 
And then it really gave us a boost um, when this uh, Nature article came out in March. So basically it's a study, a basic research study on mice and suggests there's some neural anatomical basis for electroacupuncture. Um, basically it shows electroacupuncture can help um, drive the vagal adrenal anti-inflammatory axis, therefore help decrease inflammation. So there actually has already been lots of studies suggest um, acupuncture really works, has its own like um, physiologic pathways. And then in addition, I want to mention that acupuncture has been shown to be safe, especially when it's performed by qualified practitioners. So the serious adverse event include pneumothorax, broken needles, infection, which is significantly really rare. And the minor side effect is like bleeding and bruising. Usually it's like self-limiting. It resolves in a couple of days, it's a bruising. The bleeding will just resolve in a few minutes. And so going back to acupuncture for breast cancer patients, in the next 10, 15 minutes, I'll talk about four conditions. Aromatase inhibitor induced joint muscle pain, hot flashes, insomnia, and chemo induced peripheral neuropathy. So the first condition is, is aromatase inhibitor induced joint muscle pain. Um, this is very common in patients taking aromatase inhibitor. And so around between 2010 and 2013, four pilot study came out and they were comparing real versus sham versus no acupuncture. As you can see, um, one study basically shows um, real is similar to sham and it's definitely better than no acupuncture. Um, and then the other two also shows real is similar to sham, but Dr. Hirschman's group actually shows real is better than sham acupuncture. Um, they're all small sample size, so additional definitive studies definitely needed. So as a result, Dr. Hirschman's group actually got the R01 from NIH. They were able to conduct a phase three randomized control trial among 226 women with early stage of breast cancer with moderate uh, to severe aromatase inhibitor in joint, in related joint pain. And then this study basically um, suggests that real acupuncture is better than both sham and weightless control. So this is the primary result. As you can see, those patients were getting biweekly acupuncture for six weeks, then followed by weekly, followed by observation. And the primary endpoint is really at the six weeks. So at six weeks, there's a um, difference between real versus sham acupuncture and real versus weightless control, and no big difference between sham versus weightless control. The pain reduction is about one point on a zero to 10 point scale. And then in addition, um, they showed, because two point pain reduction is considered clinically significant, meaningful, and then in the true acupuncture group, there's 57% of patients develop, have this uh, clinical significant pain reduction, whereas compared to sham and weightless control is about 30%. So that's clinically and statistically significant. And then another interesting thing is the um, effect is long lasting. It doesn't just go away after we stopped acupuncture. So as I mentioned, the patients were getting twice per week for six weeks, followed by weekly for six weeks. So as you can see, the pain reduction started already at six weeks, continued at 12 weeks, and then persisted even after acupuncture was stopped at weeks 16, 20, and 24. Um, and significantly better than sham versus uh, and weightless control. Um, so it's suggesting some kind of underlying possibly um, reduced inflammatory state causing this long lasting effect that kind of go with the basic uh, research showing the mechanism of acupuncture. And then another study I want to mention is uh, a trial our group uh, MSK recently completed and published. So this is a PEACE trial. It's a effectiveness of electroacupuncture or ear acupuncture, or auricular acupuncture versus usual care for chronic musculoskeletal pain among cancer survivors. So in this trial, 
uh, we were comparing basically 10 weekly acupuncture treatment, body acupuncture versus uh, ear acupuncture versus no acupuncture uh, for 10 weeks. So all three groups uh, were followed for 10 weeks. And then as you can see, the body acupuncture reduced pain by about 1.9 on a scale from zero to 10. And then the ear acupuncture reduced pain by about 1.6 on a scale from zero to 10. And the usual care didn't really change much. And then we observed them for two more weeks. And then this, the reason why this um, line stopped is because they were offered to incentivize them to stay in the trial and to enroll in the trial. They were offered 10 real acupuncture treatments. So that's why you know, we couldn't really continue this curve. Um, but then, as you can see, the, both the body acupuncture, electroacupuncture, and the ear acupuncture, the pain reduction persisted, um, despite the fact that the no more treatment until week 24. So how about other outcomes? So we also found that both intervention, ear and body acupuncture, um, improved pain-related functional interference and also improve physical and mental quality of life and reduce analgesic use. And interestingly, um, when you compare the electroacupuncture on the body versus ear acupuncture on the ear, um, the adverse event is actually uh, different. So not too much um, adverse event with the electroacupuncture on the body, but 10% patients have side effects uh, when you give them ear acupuncture. That's usually the ear pain. And then as a result, the ear acupuncture group has higher discontinuation rate um, due to ear discomfort. So the second condition I want to talk about is this uh, visual motor symptoms, um, such as hot flashes and night sweats. So it's very common from endocrine therapy. Symptom management is very challenging. So um, mainly because estrogen treatment is the most effective treatment, but it does increase um, risk of recurrence in patients with ER-positive breast cancer. So additional treatment is needed. How about integrated medicine therapy, such as acupuncture? So there has been a number of pilot studies done, um, and some of them actually larger. So as, see, as you can see, um, some study shows both group got better, real and sham, but no intergroup difference. And other studies shows uh, real acupuncture is better than sham acupuncture. Eleanor Walker's um, group actually showed that when you compare real acupuncture with Effexor, valinfexine, um, real acupuncture has equal efficacy with less side effect. And then the other study also showed um, real acupuncture is better. So Jim Mao's group, at that time he was at UPenn, now he's at MSK. So he did a forearm trial, randomized patients with hot flashes to electroacupuncture, sham acupuncture, gabapentin, and placebo. So as you can see, the um, average um, hot flash score reduction, electroacupuncture is the best. And then importantly is after they stop the intervention, the electroacupuncture group, the hot flash reduction continued, whereas the gabapentin group, the hot flash reduction bounced back, um, resolved. And so this is the largest um, acupuncture per hot flash school, um, trial. So this trial basically is a programmatic trial. It's enrolled uh, 190 patients, and patients were in, uh, randomized to individualized acupuncture plus enhanced self-care regimen versus enhanced self-care alone. As you can see, once again, so acupuncture decreased hot flash score significantly, and then the effect does not go away even at three months and four months, for, six months follow-up and minimum side effects. Um, and the next condition is insomnia. As we know, 68% of cancer survivors, breast cancer survivors, suffer from insomnia. And um, so the standard treatment for insomnia is actually cognitive behavior therapy for insomnia, CBTI. It's effective and gold standard, but associated, it's associated with poor adherence and non-response. And also, it requires a therapist. So in some area, it's not accessible. Um, as a result, we're wondering if acupuncture can help. 
just because uh, some pilot study already shows acupuncture can help with pain, hot flash, and related sleep disturbance. And in addition, about 73% of U.S. cancer centers already offer acupuncture. Um, as a result, we got a um, PCORI grant to run this uh, randomized control trial to compare acupuncture versus CBTI for insomnia. So mind that we use this insomnia severity index and eight point reduction is considered clinically meaningful. As you can see, um, we um, randomized patient to acupuncture versus CBTI and both intervention were effective and durable but CBTI is slightly better than acupuncture. Um, importantly, um, it's most effective for white, male, higher educated, and those patients without pain. And then last is the condition that dear to my heart, I spent past 10 years doing chemotherapy-induced peripheral neuropathy um, trials. And then, so um, basically, CIPN is a condition very common among uh, cancer survivors. It affects up to, um, depends on which study you look at, um, 30 to 60% of cancer survivors. And right now, the only um, treatment recommended by ASCO is deloxetine, Symbota. And that was recommended based on this JAMA article, um, this, this study. They randomized patient to deloxetine versus placebo and find out that deloxetine reduced CIP and pain by about one point at the end of the treatment, whereas placebo reduced the pain by about 0.3. So the difference is 0.7. Um, and then meanwhile, our group conducted a phase 2A trial, a single arm trial. Patients with valcate induced peripheral neuropathy received um, acupuncture treatment for 10 weeks. Um, and then the pain reduction is about 20 out of uh, 0 to 100 scale. And once we stop acupuncture, the pain reduction did not go away. And also interestingly, we found out that the toxicity are different. Deloxetin was associated with fatigue, insomnia, and nausea, causing 12% of patients withdrawal. And acupuncture has mild bruising. So inspired by this trial, we conducted a phase 2B trial. It's a three-arm pilot randomized control trial. Um, we were comparing real acupuncture with sham acupuncture with usual care um, to see if it can help reduce CIP and symptoms in solid tumor survivors. And this is a primary result. Um, real acupuncture reduced the pain by about two points. Um, sham acupuncture reduced the pain by about one point at the end of um, eight-week acupuncture treatment. And then the real acupuncture pain reduction persisted at 12 weeks follow-up, whereas the sham acupuncture um, pain reduction bounced back. No big difference from usual care. So because of, because of this um, promising result, we were very fortunate to be funded by NIH. It's a multi-million dollar grant. And um, it's a phase three randomized control trial comparing acupuncture with sham acupuncture for CIP and pain, our ACT trial. And we hope to enroll 250 patients. The trial has been ongoing, and so far we enrolled 21 patients. And this is a study schema. So patients, 250 patients randomized to real versus sham acupuncture and follow that week. 8, 12, 18, and 24. Oops. And then we're hoping that we'll be able to finish this uh, study by the end of 2024 and be able to present the result. So in summary, um, I do think um, healthcare providers should be aware that acupuncture poses minimum risk and can potentially benefit patients significantly. And it's a reasonable treatment option for breast cancer survivors um, to alleviate treatment-induced side effects such as pain, hot flashes, insomnia, and maybe CIPN. We'll see. And um, additional studies are needed. Um, just want to um, put a plug for our poster. We have a poster on this uh, PEACE trial subgroup analysis on breast cancer patients only. 
comparing body acupuncture with ear acupuncture with usual care. So that will be presented um, by Dr. Iris Zhu at poster session for on Thursday afternoon. And then um, I want to thank all these people, especially our patients, and all this funding opportunity to help us to continue the research. Um, lastly, I just want to say, as the immediate past president of Society for Integrative Oncology, um, we basically present all this evidence-based uh, integrative medicine approaches, and our next meeting is at the uh, Scottsdale, Arizona in October 19th to 22. Um, so I don't think I have time for questions, so I'll take questions at the end. Thank you very much.